Hi, in this video we're going to have a quick look at game theory in a 2x3 situation. We're going to consider this game here. We've got player A playing against player B. Player A has two strategies it can play or two options it can play. And player B has three options that it can play. This is a zero-sum game, which means any gain for player A is going to be a loss for player B. So for example, this here would be a gain of three for player A. However, it would mean a loss of three for player B. Our first job is to check for any dominance. So we're going to see if any of our strategies here are pointless or useless. Well, if we have a look at player A's two strategies, we can see that its second strategy is better than the first strategy in this situation. However, its first strategy would be better than the second strategy in this situation. Okay, so that means that there isn't any dominance here. Okay, if we look at player B, well, with player B, we've got to make uh, more comparisons. So if we compare um, option one to option two, option two would be better than option one over here. Sorry, I'll say that again. Option one, because remember, this is a loss, will be better than option two over here. Yeah, that would be a loss of one. However, that would be a loss of three. So a loss of one would be better than a loss of three over here. This would be a loss of two and this would be a gain of two. So option two would be better than option one here. So one's better than two here, but two is better than one over here. If we could compare option one to option three, we can say three is better than one over here. However, option one is better than option three over here. I can compare two to three and option three would be better than option two over here however option two is better than option three over here so we can see that there is a point to each of these strategies um, and therefore there isn't any dominance okay right um, what we are going to do is we're going to look to find a mixed strategy um, for player a so we're looking for the optimal mixed strategy for player a so if we say that player A is going to choose option 1 and option 2 with varying probability, so it's going to have um, uh, play option 1 with a probability of P, which means it, it will play option 2 with a probability of 1 take away P. Okay, so for example, if it was going to play option 1 3 tenths of the time, then it would obviously play option 2 7 tenths of the time. Okay and we're looking to find that best combination um, that's going to give us the highest expected value. Okay, so when B chooses option 1, well, our expected value, if B chooses option 1, would be 1 times P plus 2 times 1 take away P. That's how much we would expect to gain. Okay, so if we simplify that, our expected value is going to be P plus 2 take away, sorry, yeah, take away 2P, which gives us 2 take away P. So that there um, tells us our expected value for option 1. We could do the same thing for option 2. So um, we would get our expected value is 3 times P. Um, plus a negative 2 times 1 take away p and that simplifies to v is equal to 5p take away 2 and then finally when b chooses option 3 we've got negative 1 times p plus 3 times 1 take away p and that gives us an expected value that simplifies to v is equal to 3 take away 4p Okay, what we're now going to do is we're going to plot each of these lines. They're all linear, so we're going to plot each of these lines um, on a little graph. So um, our graph is going to have an x-axis and a y-axis. I should say V there, expected value. We've used the letter V to stand for that. Okay, so our x-axis uh, goes from 0 to 1. Because of our probabilities, it's going to have a domain that's going to go from 0 to 1. Our y-axis um, is going to tell us what our expected value is. So an easy way to plot these graphs is if I substitute a probability of 0 in and substitute a probability of 1 in, then 
I can work out my expected value for each of those situations. So for, for example here, if p is 0, v is going to be equal to 2, so that's where the 2 comes from. If p is 1, then v is going to be equal to 1, and where that's, that's where that 1 comes from. For the green one for option 2, if p is equal to 0, then v is going to be equal to negative 2, and if p is equal to 1, then v is going to be equal to 3, and that's where that comes from. p is equal to 0, v is 3, and if p is equal to 1, v is negative 1. Okay, so once we've drawn all these in, our feasible region is going to be um, all of the points that are underneath all three of the lines. So all of these points are under all three of these lines. And the highest points, so if I was going to draw a horizontal um, line, and I'll use a... Do a purple line over here, okay. If I was going to draw a horizontal line, um, the highest point is going to be my highest possible expected value, then the highest point that I can get to is going to be that point there. Okay, so if we read off that point there, that's going to tell us our um, highest expected value. Now it's difficult to read off this graph, um, and in fact we would never really read it off the graph. What we want to do is we want to find out what the p-value is going to be over here and then we can use that to work out our expected value. So to work out the p-value over here um, we're going to use simultaneous equations for this blue line and this green line. Okay, so we're going to solve these two equations simultaneously. So if v is equal to 5p take away 2 and v is equal to 3 take away 4p that means 5p take away 2 must be equal to 3 take away 4p. Okay, um, and then I can work out my probability from here, so that's going to be 9p is equal to 5, which tells me that p is equal to 5 ninths. So what we're saying here is that player A should play option 1 with probability 5 ninths. Yeah, so option 1 was probability of p, which we worked out to be 5 ninths, and option 2 is going to be a probability of 1 take away p, um, and one takeaway five ninths is four ninths, which makes sense because these probabilities should add up to one. Okay, we can then use this to work out the value of the game. Now the value of the game is um, we can just substitute this into either one of these, not into this one, into either one of these. So we've got, um, if I substitute that in, I've got 25 ninths take away two which is going to be 25 ninths, take away 18 ninths, which is going to give me 7 ninths. Okay, so that's going to be the value of the game, um, and this here tells us what our mixed strategy is going to be. Okay, I hope you found that useful, um, and thanks for joining me.